Hello chess players, it's me again, bringing you another edition of, another edition of chess, pardon me, I'm just trying to get the, uh, trying to get this thing down, anyway, I uh, hope everybody can see the chess board. It's I'm playing black here against Stockfish level 6. Now level 6 is about expert level. You know how I know that? Because I've played it over a hundred games, folks. And when you play it that many games, you get an idea about how good or how bad the computer is. So anyway, I had the black pieces here in our perpetual match. And here's how the opening went. I'm a Sicilian player, guys. But here, you know, I try to be original in the opening. I know that nobody plays A6, and even Stockfish doesn't like A6. Yet the O'Kelly is a line, and the idea is I know that your knights are going to end up trying to <clears throat> trying to put pressure on the, the b5 square, so I want to uh, immediately come out here and stake, stake out territory. Now in the Sicilian, you know, you always have to take that pawn or else he's going to push, you know. So here black kind of has um, the uh, the C file to play with, uh, put pressure on the half open C file. Now we have the dreaded Maroxy bind. And folks, this is no big deal. You know, in the olden days, they used to think, oh, black has a, you know, white has a fatally cramping pawn structure, but uh, it's quite playable for black. Now I just gotta basically develop my pieces and then castle. Now I don't have to really castle here. I used to in the past play a move like h5, which a lot of you may think is a bit freaky, but the idea is that I can, you know, force him to play h3, and then um, I can always castle by hand, you know. Now the computer doesn't like that move, it likes knight c6, but the purpose of this move is to get the knight into play without trading pieces. You want to have a complicated game. Now this is very provocative. I didn't think he could even do that because of this move. But it turns out that my move uh, is just, uh, you know, very dangerous because of the text. And I completely, I said, wow, you're giving me a piece. But watch this. Boom! The knight comes in. Now the best defense is pawn takes pawn, but I just, I just didn't see it. I thought, oh, I'm busted. It's over, because I can't really stop bishop d4. Once it gets bishop d4, and notice that my queen has absolutely no, uh, no escape squares. So my best move I completely overlook, which is to recapture. Pawn takes pawn, but I just missed it. So here I have to give up my queen. I thought, wow, this is over. Bingo! Notice that the queen cannot go anywhere, so I have to take the rook. And now he should probably interpolate knight takes bishop check, rook takes bishop, and then take, and then black is fatally busted, basically. Um, you know, I mean, I can keep playing, but basically it's in the long run kind of hopeless. But this gives me a chance, you know, to preserve the bishop. And this bishop on f8 is the one that actually uh, allows me to win the game later. e5, uh, I think he should probably play pawn takes pawn. And... I just don't think that uh, there's enough play for black to uh, fully equalize. 
and indeed the computer has white ahead by four four points, which I kind of agree with. This is bad, you know, but uh, you don't get up in rating by quitting. That's one of the things to learn. Here the computer just starts throwing me, throwing away a pawn, and already, you know, I had hopes of a draw, maybe. Now that's kind of a lemon. He should really recapture the pawn. Here, you know, I could play bishop b7, or I could push. Now if I push the pawn, bishop f6 is, is dangerous for me. So I don't want to push the pawn. So I just develop. And that's kind of a lemon, 9a5. Now my bishop has a solid outpost. Now the game is actually plus 2, is what Stockfish gives here. And I still have some chances with... Uh, I basically have a rook and bishop against the queen, and there's still, you know, some chance to hold this. So I'm not I'm not going to resign the game yet. And he has a knight that's bad on a5. So anyway, now I just keep attacking the knight, and this is what I was hoping for. When the knight comes here, I take it, he captures back, and I have isolated pawn to work on. Now, I really thought that I was okay here. Um, I'm really hoping he takes, bishop takes knight, because then we have obstacle to bishops, and that's going to give me all kinds of drawing chances. Now, the computer doesn't like that. It claims I should have played h6. But uh, I am quite okay with my move. Sometimes it's okay to dis disagree with the computer. That's how you get better. Um, I know when my students are improving, when they, when they are able to, you know, intelligently disagree with me over why a certain move should be played. Now this bishop has an excellent diagonal, heading up to f2, which is the weakest, weakest square uh, on the chessboard normally. Now I start maneuvering. Maybe this knight is headed knight e6, knight d4, or knight g6, knight f4. Um, now I start attacking the vulnerable f2 square. And this is a good thing to do. Because he can't defend it easily except by rook d2. Rook f1 is passive. You know, you always want to avoid passivity in chess. So the rook is the major defensive piece, attack the rook. Ah, that's kind of a lemon. Now I'm, I'm back in business. But which way should I take? With the knight or with the bishop? That's really the $64 question here. The computer likes knight takes pawn and the computer uh, usually is not uh, wrong. The computer is almost always right. Yet I thought my knight could get trapped after. Um, I thought my knight might get trapped, so I played what I thought was the safer move. And now I might have blundered here. Bishop Bishop C five is what the computer gives. I knew I had to move my my bishop. But, you know, where, you know, where should I move my vision? Well, question mark. Now, I knew that black does not want to play bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, queen takes pawn, because knight e3 check wins. Wins the piece, wins the bishop by 40. So I thought my knight might have a good outpost on e3, you know, and I thought I, I thought I was doing doing okay here, but uh, he really he really should have taken the bishop. Bishop c1, that's a lemon. Now I thought I was better now, so I was quite happy here for black.
Actually, this was the move that was played, King E1. Yeah. So now I'm retreating. Now I miss the best, which is H5. H5 makes complete sense because that knight is just a beast there. But I played, you know, maybe a little bit weakly here. I played G6, unnecessary. And now uh, I thought my knight might be doing something. Um, see, what I don't want is I don't want to take his bishop because then we have same colored bishops. I'm much better off with obstacle bishops here. So now I thought I was going to maybe try to get the knight check, knight d3 check in or something, which is he prevents it. But now I start uh, moving my uh, extra forces in and blacks. We've got a very dangerous uh, initiative going. Now materially it's about even now, but I was quite happy here. Now I've got some back rank stuff coming. This is the only move, by the way. Now I've got my obscure bishops. This is what I was playing for all through the all through the game, pretty much. And this is a very uh, important pattern for you guys to learn: is when should I go for obscure bishops? This is the time to go for that. Um, And you'll see why. Now I didn't expect that. I really expected bishop d5. But obviously he was afraid of knight f4 threatening mate. So that's why he didn't go with a more natural bishop d5. Bishop f5 is a typical computer move. Now I've got exactly what I want. Two good minor pieces in the middle dominating his bishop. Now notice that the bishop has very little squares that are reasonable. You don't want to go to g4, h3, because then the checks might be dangerous down there. So bishop c2 still, you know, the only security is really on the b3 square for the bishop where it's completely inactive. So black can be quite happy with this position. Now, since this is typical, the computer is holding the position together with tactics. Notice that I cannot take the bishop because queen g3 check forking the king and the rook. So I decide, well, I'm just going to come in there and attack. Now I'm turning rook f2, winning his queen. Again, he finds some incredible stuff here to uh, hang, hang tight. But the bishop is really in danger of getting dominated. The bishop on f5. So now uh, you want to keep the rook on the on the on the seventh to kind of harass the king and uh, get get some kind of good mating attack going. Now it might looks like a draw, but I don't want to draw here. So I decided, well, let's start ripping. You know. That C pawn is important because uh, it could become a pass pawn. Now I'm happy to trade off here. Now that creates a weakness, which I'm going to attack later on. Yeah. See that uh, black has a good position because everything is held. Now we're going to do some maneuvering. Notice in the last couple of moves, black has improved his position. The rook is now on f5 instead of e6. And so I can now keep improving my position here. Now I'm really targeting the g-pawn and it's kind of surprising he just lets me take it. Now black is winning I think. But he has to still exercise technique. It's still not going to be easy to get that get that pawn. Uh, I want to get that h-pawn down there. You know. Meanwhile he has some counterplay with his king which I don't like. His king is, is weird, okay? You know, what's the king doing over there? You know? Anyway, I'm coming in trying to queen that pawn. 
but I'm getting nervous about his king coming in. Now I'm really trying to see, I'm hoping that his king goes to e8, then bishop f8, and it's over. But he's brings the king out of there. See, I didn't want to play f6 because it exposes my king, yet now the, the bishop has security. Bishop has finally pawn support. You know, you always want to protect your minor pieces. Now I'm probably getting the rook. Now the computer says it's over at this point. Minus 10, something like that, that means it's over. So my only problem is how do I get the how do I get the uh, pawn down there? It's very simple. See, I'm willing to sack that pawn, but look, see, forces the queen out, and now I'm getting rook g1 in. See, he doesn't have a perpet, that's the thing. He doesn't have a perpet. It looks like he has a perpet, but in reality, it just doesn't pan out. It doesn't pan out, because I always have f5. Now I can queen the pawn. And then this is my idea. There are no more checks. And it's time for White to pay the piper now. Gotcha, bar bro. Gotcha. Now I'm going in for my own mating attack. Now you advanced players can end the video at this point. But it's good for you uh, beginners to see what the technique is to bring the king in for a checkmate. See, he kind of has to do that now. I can either take the queen now, but I'm going to do an even better move. See, here, this wins the queen without me having to give up any material. I'm getting the queen for free. And now, let's see if you guys can find the mate. Here's the first move. And now... Here it is. Thanks, guys, for watching my queen sacrifice. Bye-bye.